into the future. Minutes. Lewis Largent with you for 120 minutes here on MTV, the best alternative music video show every Sunday night at midnight, 11 central. Tonight, when it, our ode to LA continues. Last week we had Dramarama, and this week, when you think of LA and important bands in the LA scene, you'd probably think of, off the top of your head, you'd think of Jane's Addiction, The Doors, Black Flag. X definitely has to fall in the bunch of important LA bands and they are going to be here for an interview and live performance so stay with us for that and brand new videos we got great videos tonight from PJ Harvey, Suede, Juliana Hatfield, The Fall, Verve and The Bats plus the latest and greatest from Ned's Tongue Dustbin, Cranberries, Matthew Sweet, Urge Overkill, Blind Melon and lots 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 more which includes right now a world premiere video from Chicago's Smashing Pumpkins. Now the Smashing Pumpkins have kind of proceeded on a Jane's Addiction like course. I remember when Nothing Shocking came out, it didn't come on with the splash of say like Smells Like Teen Spirit from Nirvana and just exploded. It just, it came out and then it stayed around for a long time and by word of mouth and touring the band just like slowly, slowly got a bigger audience and this album when it comes up is going to explode. They came out with their album uh, Gish in 1991. Their new album is about uh, ready to be released uh, July 27th as a matter of fact the date on Siamese Dream. So check it out. The Smashing Pumpkin it are going to be probably the most important alternative act in the rest of the year and into 1994. Cherbrock from the Smashing Pumpkins world premiere. A week late on that one, but uh, regardless, it's all going to make sense because it's 120 minutes on MTV. I'm Louis Largent, and my special guests tonight are John Doe and Exine Cervenka from the legendary LA punk band X. Is that okay to call you legendary LA punk band X? Legendary, I have trouble with. Punk band is fine. <laughs> Now, I'm legendary, way around. I like legendary. I don't yeah. know. We legendary like sounds like you're about to die or something. Y you guys can't really call yourself punk rock anymore, can you? Just sure rock and roll band? You think yes, so? Yes, we can do. Oh, it's a weird thing. I like, I mean, alternative's better because you can make money <laughs> when you're an alternative band. It seems band. like it these days. You could sell records if you're an alternative band. You can't do anything except play, you know, 200 seat places <laughs> if you're a punk band. But you're respected, though. Yeah. I got plenty of respect back at home. So here it is, it's 1993, and uh, you are in a band, again, the band X. Mm -hmm. Did you think you'd, you'd be here in 1993 when it all started out in, when did you guys, late 70s? Yeah, it was yeah. late 70s when that scene was happening, uh, first in LA. Um, you know, I don't think we've ever planned out too much more than one day at a time, or one record at a time, or one tour at a time. I think it's really smart to be that way in a band. And um, maybe, maybe it's, for a business standpoint, maybe it's not the smartest thing, but I, I still can't see past the end of this tour in August. We don't really know what we're going to do after that. I think that's okay. Think about the show you're playing and play it and play it good and that's it. It seems like the, the punk rock myth, at least when it first started, was like very quick and then a quick like burnout maybe. So. Uh, you know, I don't think so because I think that this whole alternative music scene is still a part of that. And I, I don't... I don't credit us with any the way people sound nowadays because I don't think it's the same sound but but I do think it, it started an ethic and it's it opened doors and I think X and the Circle Jerks and you know those kind of bands um, led the way really just the same way Patti Smith or television led the way for for us what made you decide to um, you, you guys did you guys ever officially break up it's um, no. never officially broke up just never never just did other stuff did you always know back in 87 when you, when you kind of went your separate ways that you'd be back here eventually? Yeah, deep down. 
I mean, in, it was 89 that we decided to do different stuff. Um, we thought we would get together for benefits and, you know, special shows and stuff like that. I don't think we were positive we would put out a record and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Just different people, friends and family saying, so this is good, this solo record's good and that's nice and when's X gonna play? You know, the $64,000 question. But, um, yeah, it's good. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to you guys more. You brought your, all your instruments and everything and the rest of the band, you're gonna play acoustic yeah. later on. Yeah, hold it. And we're gonna play Country at War. Stick around because uh, we're gonna talk to them oh. about their new album, Jesus, while you check out this video, Country at War.
from their first full-length album, A Storm in Heaven, that is Verve, with a new video called Slide Away on 120 Minutes on MTV. I'm Louis Largent. This is Exine Cervenka. That is John Doe. They are from X. And a little while ago, we saw Country at War from your new album, Hey Zeus. The title of that album, is it, uh, what is it, is it, I thought for a second it was Hey Zeus. It's, it's anything you want it to be. What, it, what, it, what are you thinking about <laughs> when you named it? Um, go ahead, Exine. You had a good answer the, just the last time. I don't time. remember the last time. Give us I the honest answer. Don't give us this said. fake TV. No uh, fake you know, it's not a fake thing. You know, it doesn't go too much past. You know, we just someone said we should call the record Zeus, and then someone said, "Okay, hey Zeus," and then we called it Hey Zeus. That simple. In studio joke. It's but you know what's weird joke. is that it is that it puts Latin culture up, up in front of people's faces, and and that's weird. Like in the Midwest where they're not used to it yet. I mean, they're they're becoming used to it quickly. But mm -hmm. it's like, so yeah, those Latin guys. What, is this, what does this mean? Um, is this like l the, the Mexican, per I mean, I mean uh, the Mexican-American, I mean, uh, uh, and, and they're not comfortable with, with like Latin culture. So they're, they're stumbling over themselves. So it's cool like that. Breaking down like the barriers. Yeah. Um, country at War is, if I'm not mistaken, some of it is about the LA riots, right? Which has been, I guess, a popular subject with um, a lot of people who were living in the city when that was going on. Is that true? Yeah, the last verse is, well, I rewrote the last verse for that. Now, what was it about pre to that? Was it just about just in the way things are going kind of right now, that simple? Oh, uh, about the Gulf War. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what inspired it because all this stuff's going on and, and everyone just goes and buys their papers and they, they have their breakfast and they do all these normal things, which I think is probably the, the most honest reaction to a war for a country being at war. But um, it was frightening. We drove, I, a friend of mine and I drove through Los Angeles when the riots were happening. and. Um, there, there were a lot of fires, and it was it was really frightening. I had to go from Long Beach home, <clears throat> um, near Bakersfield, and, and it was. Did you drive through when the um, uh, the um, the uh, what is it when they closed down the entire city? The uh, curfew. Yeah, the curfew was going yeah. on. Yeah, we did. Didn't it feel we're, like it was like like seriously? You're driving by, and like an atomic bomb exploded, and the whole city was dead. Well, we just we just were on freeways. We didn't get off the freeway. Yeah. That's a good thing. We had a police chief that wanted to let the city burn to prove some kind of racial point, which was really, really scary. Because yeah. you were watching, you were watching it, and you were going, "No one's stopping this." And then the next day, you're going, "No one's stopping this." Yeah. He's pretty. gone now. Thank God. He's doing a radio show now. Just <laughs> Get out. Oh. Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. a radio yeah. show. No, him, doing him and Rush Limbaugh yeah. on the same station. Get out. I swear yeah. to God. Oh, God. Oh, okay, uh, they're still going to play acoustic. <laughs> We're going to chat more with John Doe and Exine Cervenka from X. And um, stay with us on 120 Minutes. Back in the days when John Doe had that heavy metal long hair of his, and and Exine looked so cute with her with her tiara on, with her supermodel pose yes. video. And so did DJ Bonebreak with his big nice wig. wig. <laughs> <laughs> nice lid. Yo. Nice lid. Do you still have that uh, the tiara, by the way? I think I gave it to my goddaughter. Oh, you look so cute. But in I can it. always find another one, you know. New York the is chock full of rhinestone district TRs. of New York City. Tierra capital of the world, I think, actually. Mm -hmm. So you guys just played an enormous festival in Washington, D.C., the WHFS Festival at RFK Stadium. How was that for you guys? It was, it was wonderful. It was really neat. It was really hot. It was so wonderful coming off stage. It was like being a marathon runner and just like kind of wanting to collapse. But it was good belly played and posies and Iggy Pop and... A bunch of bands. In excess. Was that the biggest uh, biggest crowd you've ever played to? I think Probably. Farm Aid. Farm Aid, the first one, was, ah. was bigger. Uh, well, there was about 50 or 60,000 people at RSK. A so lot it's of close. people. Yeah. But once Plenty. you get past 15,000, <clears throat> it kind of tends Does to... It, I, think it's not yeah, I think it's yeah. one, once it's past like 5,000, yeah. then you can't really see. But it's, it's a charge, you know. 
I think a steady diet of it would make you loony. What do you, what do you think of it? That's amazing that like uh, an alternative music festival these days can get 50 or 60,000 people. Do you yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Um, do you think like if you started today, it would be any different for you guys? Like if you just started to release like the same records, you think like the way the industry is and the way people's perceptions well, are, it would, it would. Then you're taking a block out of the bottom of the stack, and I don't know mm, how you could do that without yeah. the whole thing. I mean, it's without just the, it's, an, it's impossible to say because nothing exists in a vacuum. One band, re, you know, does something, and another band does something that ref, you know reflects that or is opposite that, and it just kind of builds into this whole. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. I still think that the half of the lyrics would wouldn't make it onto radio. Uh, for for a song like Los Angeles, it's real popular when we play yeah. it live. It couldn't get on the radio even now. It's got you know, it's got a bunch of racial slurs and, yeah. and stuff and like that. Not from the band's perspective, but from the perspective of the character uh, which the song is about. Well, but rap so. music. I don't know. Does that I, I, yeah, I can't I, I can't feature uh, a nigger and Jew being on uh, Mexican the Caver and stuff like that being on I MTV, mean, <laughs> for instance. Okay. Shoot. <laughs> Dang. So, okay. Dang. Now, on that note, we're going to come back and uh, wash his mouth, mouth out with soap, and they're going to play acoustically. And right now, we're going to check out Julianne Hatfield's latest. And, Xene, you've had an experience with Julianne. Well, we sang a song together for a movie called Across the Moon. And uh, I, I did a soundtrack with this guy, Chris Ting. And uh, we called her up, and she came out to LA and sang with me. It was nice. And Juliana is now the Juliana Hatfield Three, and Become What You Are is the name of her latest album, their first album, I guess, if you are calling them a band now. And here is my sister. <laughs> Whoa! 
from the song with no album. Um, that was Wild Thing from X, 1985. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a last minute request from you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, any particular fondness for that uh, video? Because it's, it's wild and we haven't seen it in a long time. Exene, Exene was the producer on that video. Producer. Yeah, a fine job fine. you did, love. It sounds fabulous. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It made its way onto a big motion picture called Major League. Well, not the song. It's just she didn't the video. produce the song, just the video. But. No, the song was in the movie. Yeah, but yes. I didn't produce it. Oh, I produced didn't the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> How did you guys end up doing that song anyway? It's, Somebody, it's, we, we did it on a whim, and, and uh, a record company person said, you ought to cut that, and we did. How and come it never made it onto any album? Because it was just a special thing. We may, we may um, put it on a record sometime. A greatest hits record, perhaps? Perhaps. Uh, no one You've already done knows. a live album, which it wasn't included on. That's true. We got kind of tired after Tone Loke did it, you know, kind of put it in a different thing, you know. But now we're doing it again live. Like scenes rocking out on the guitar. We're a four piece now. Oh. Part, partially. Part of the time. So what's uh, before you, we're gonna, you're going to come back and play acoustically? So this will be your last chance to say what you're going to mm. be doing in the next uh, several months to a year. Well, we're going to touring. Tour. Just tour. You gonna go to other countries or just keep it pretty much here in the States? Um, I think we'll go to England, maybe uh, Italy, which is always good for us. But we're gonna be Do you guys have a big following in Italy? Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, LA, we, we LA haven't been bands. there in a while, but, but they seem to appreciate yeah. the weirder side of American culture. Last well, quick question, what do you think of the LA scene these days or lack thereof? It doesn't seem like a band like you could exist these days, which is really kind of sad. Oh no, I think there's definitely a scene, and I'll tell you why. Um, the bands like L7 that started the Rock for Choice concert series, yeah, you know, they had true. Nirvana and Hall and Eddie Vedder, and one, one of the nights I did it, I was the MC with Joan Jett, and we were introducing Jeanette Napolitano and Mud Honey and Green Apple Quick Step and, and Seven Year Bitch and all these bands from uh, Seattle and LA, and it was so great because you'd walk backstage and you'd see these people and I never met any of them before, and I'd just say, hey, and they'd say, hey, how's mm -hmm. it going? And it wasn't a big deal that we were in bands. It, it, was, it was very much like the early days of the scene, and it's because you're doing it for reasons other than just to have a career, and that's the ethic and the mentality that still lives in bands like Firehose and Rollins. I'd forgotten. That was a really uh, stupid statement on my part, i got to oh, say, it's in okay. retrospect. No, I think you're asking a question on behalf of people who want to know if that's the case or not, because I get asked that a lot by people and I think it's, it's valid to, to wonder about it. But yes, there's a scene and there's a community. I think there's community nationwide. The alternative music scene is right. a bunch of cities and a bunch of bands all hooked up and a bunch of people who like it. Okay, uh, go get your instruments and they're going to come back and perform acoustically okay. with us. So stick around. <laughs> MTV's new VJs. They Louis Larger back on 120 Minutes with the entire band of X and Xene and John, you already know. Do you want to give me some accompanying music while I introduce the other half of X? Sure. And now, ladies and gentlemen, plain drums. He's an extraordinary man and acrobatic as well. DJ Bone Break. Thank you. Woo. And on the guitar, the silent member of X, Tony Gilkison. And John, would you like to introduce the song and what it's the about? The song is uh, New Life. It was uh, sort of inspired by my daughter. And um, it's, it's about trying to, to change yourself um, into another person. Never mind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you X. Just want a different, you want a new life Better than this one, it ain't so bad 
Turquoise house out in the suburbs, clothes hanging on the line. One just like it burned down last week, right next to mine. You want a new life better than this one? It ain't so bad, just want it different. You want a new life better than this one? It ain't so bad, you just want a different. That's the bats with courage and the final video on 120 minutes tonight. We invite you to drop us a line and let you uh, or ask you what you thought of tonight's show. Be nice, be friendly, be mean, be vicious. We can all we can take it. We're grown men and women around here. 120 minutes. 1515 Broadway is the address. 24th floor, New York, New York. 136. Thank you very much to X for stopping by. Make sure you're here with 120 midnight, 11 central next Sunday night, Monday morning. The Posies will be here to play acoustic and um, chat a little as well. And don't forget our friend Kennedy weeknights at 12 for Alternative Nation. Thank you for watching for 120 minutes. I'm Lewis Largent. Bye. <laughs> Kennedy coming up this hour, we've got videos, videos, videos galore from Ozzy Osbourne, The Posies, Dream All Day, and Jackals also coming up right now.